exercise must be precise. Saka he had so man took a bundle of soup. Come on, the soldier. You are the most hated officer around here. I cannot do this without you, my brother. This exercise must be precise. You must be willing and ready to move within five minutes' notice. We recognize that the government, the civilians, our military, needs the consent of the people to govern. We do not intend to rule by force. when it comes to film production. We're all looking forward so much to uh, having a wonderful experience in watching this epic film. Uh, so, uh, yes, it's a great night. You can all see uh, the crowd building up in such a significant, uh, having a significant presence here. So I'm looking forward to watching the film. And uh, yes, I guess the review will be quite exciting. Hi everyone, I'm AJ E. Jones here representing for First View TV. We are here at the Cine World in O2 Centre, Greenwich for the premiere of Badamosi. Come and check it out. This is the long awaited movie. Check it out, it should be great. I'm here with the one and only Lipsy Baby. How yes, you doing? What's up? It's good. I'm good. I'm alright. I'm great. What's up, people? So cool, Lipsy Baby. So yeah. So what are you looking forward to with this movie? Yeah, I'm actually looking for the insight. I, I believe this movie is going to be very insightful. I want to hear some of the true stories because when I heard about you know the general, I was a kid growing up, so I didn't really know a lot about him. So this movie is going to be an opportunity for me to actually see what actually went down and get my own story, not from what people are telling me. So yeah, I'm very looking forward to that. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about your stuff, your music. Oh yeah, 100%. So, um, like I said, my name is Lipsy Baby. I'm an Afrobeat, Afropop artist. Originally from Nigeria, I'm on Nigeria, did the beauty, get me? <laughs> but you know, we're in London, we're in O2 tonight. And for me, I just dropped my debut EP called Story to Glory. It's out on all platform, guys. Check me out on Spotify, Audio Mac, Apple Music, everywhere. Go check it out. That EP is absolutely banging. Lipsy Baby of Africa. Don't, for, don't, don't forget to, of Africa. You get me? Check me on Instagram, guys. Connect with me. I'm all out here doing the work, support, and love. Thank you, guys. Lipsy Baby, we will see you inside. Have 100%. fun, enjoy the movie. I'm Darushi Obi Malonya and I'm the son of Obi Malonya. So we're so excited to watch your father's film today. How are you feeling? I um, feel kind of excited because I think it's a film that many people need to see. Um, I think they need to see the history of Nigeria. My name is Florence Okonkwo, actress, producer, queen of Red Carpet, HRM International. You look wonderful. Oh, thank you. So you're looking forward to this film today? Yeah, why not? I'm so proud of um, Obi. Obi is my co-producer, director. He has done a great job here. That's why I'm here to support. Thank you very much. This is Dr. Michael Chukujeku. Um, I'm a producer and actor. And it's very, very amazing being here this evening to see Obi Emelinye's movie. He is one of those directors that we look up to. And because of his attentions to details and all, uh, it's just a movie that one had to look for. Because when I saw the Bademesi and saw the costume, saw the formation, the selection, the casting, I mean, I was quite optimistic that this is going to be a wonderful movie. But fingers crossed, let's go and watch it and see what it is, what it says. You look really nice. I love the hair. 
Yes, we are. Funny enough. You look gorgeous, by the way. Thank you. We're here to support my uncle. <laughs> uh, you want to drop that, yeah? I, I believe everybody has a past. Every woman has a past. But that past doesn't define your presence. And we're not telling the story about the woman. We're telling the story about the man. There's a thing, from what I saw here tonight, I saw a story that seems to change narrative of what we, we, when we say we, the average man on the street, think happened. From what you said tonight, it seems that um, I will be, although he regretted what he did, but seems to be exonerating himself from all the action that has brought us to where we are today. June 12 was a norm, and we all agree it was a norm. But in the situation of a norm in June 12, what I'm seeing in this room is a scene. It was a push from a backdrop. My question is this What was the part that was signed between a backdrop and IBD? If he did tell you that, that's one question. Then, secondly, secondly is that when all the incidents was happening. Why did he say anything then? Why now? Why did he really till now? Um, a postscript, a little bit of a scene that happens after the initial credits roll. And that scene would have answered your first question, which is if there was a pact between IBB and Apacha. And, and um, but to answer that question directly, I would say that if you paid attention, you would see that IBB was calling Abacha Khalifa. And Khalifa means successor. So the question would be, was he simply trying to make his friend happy and buy his loyalty or did he actually plan to cede the power to Abacha? Um, I, I think you need to see that scene to be able to, to get the full answer. But the truth of the matter is that, based on my discussions with him, and, and, and I think his son took part in that conversation, he said that he wasn't planning to hand over power. But his son said, but dad, you called him successor. He didn't have an answer to that. And you make up your own minds. appreciate Julius Agu. Thank you. Um, I actually came to London. I never knew that um, the premiere of this movie was actually going today. I just, I just called Obi Melanie um, because um, I was with someone and the person just said that the premiere was on this Saturday. I just called him and he told me, yes, that he's holy. So I must say that I thank him very much because he actually put me on the movie after my surgery. He was the only one that put me on a movie after my surgery and he understood the things. Put your hands together, clap for him, yes. Um, there's a message here that we, you, know, you could have relate with this movie and you missed it. And that part of this message, Nigerians, we consistently miss to pass this message with every opportunity we get. So part of what happened with June 12, I believe people know this, was part of what Igbos call Osa Biola. A lot of Igbos died with this and lost money in the north. And they were slaughtered and killed. It's a big opportunity for us to pass this message and share this message. And you guys missed it. And for me, I take it as a personal disappointment because those of Igbos who had the opportunity to speak with IBB, it should have been a good opportunity to tell him about what happened to Igbos and what continues to happen to Igbos all over Nigeria political subject and everybody seems to have a lot of views about the politics. I haven't come to see it. I don't have a 
previous interest in Nigerian politics, but what I did notice was a fantastic piece of Nigerian art and film. And the question is, so the lead actor uh, did a fantastic, a truly amazing job. So the, the, the question is, Given that it's such a continuing to be very controversial subject and quite a complex man, what obstacles did the lead actor have, either personally or politically, and how did you help him with those during the making and the preparation of the film? I'm going to skip one more question. You know, answer the two questions together. And then, and then we're, we're going to call it a wrap. I'm going to take it from this gentleman. Hi. Where's uh, Steve? Steve, Steve okay. where you at? Spotlight. Spotlight. So, so this is from CC, CC uh, connecting CC on Clubhouse. We, we wanted to ask when. Yes, this is We wanted to ask when is the movie actually coming out to the wider audience so that everybody can actually get to see it. And I think he should be ready for Twitter. Okay. Obie and Melanie, congratulations for making this incredible biopic on the life of General IBB. Thank you for blessing us tonight with your brilliance, your passion, your power, and greatness. My question is, in terms of filmmaking, what do you think are the necessary changes we need to make for our stories to travel space and time? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. This is too busy. Obi! Is it working? Obi! You know this is going to be very controversial because my, my recollection of IBB is negative. But the way that you've told it, you've painted a very good picture of the man. And I don't think everyone's going to agree with this depiction of IBB. It's the last one. Mr. Obi, thank you very much for you know, keeping your audience glued to the screen. You know, you've done a very great job here. Um, my question is, uh, I was wondering, what was... Uh, my name is um, Sergeant Chibweze Francis Induka, for the British Army. Um, my question is, what drew Mr. Obi, what was the drive? What was the interest, you know, to this story? You know, what was that key, that boss that made him think out of the box? You know, because I heard from his interview, he flew to Mina a couple of times, you know. It took him over three years to actually get this man to sit down and talk to him. You know, people would have given up at first glance, you know or after trying twice, but he was persistent. So I want to know why you know, this was so important to him. Thank you, Mr. Obi. Thank, Thank you so much. He's going to deal with those questions and then we're going to wrap it up. Obi, I know it's not easy. We, got, we can't do, sorry, brother, sorry, time. So, a couple of questions. Number one from that gentleman, obviously very angry, remembers how things were, Osa Abiela. From the gentleman over there, he was simply saying, you know, how you made the movie. Um, Remy Benson was... Let me, let, me, let me take them one after the other. I have a Manoj one, two, three, one. <clears throat> so, my brother that was um, making a case for the Igbos, I'm very, very Igbo and proud to be Igbo. Um, the beginning of the film, I don't know if you caught it. Were you here at the very beginning of the film? Ross, were you here at the very beginning of the film? Did you see the Biafra war? They were late. They were late. You were late. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. So, so this film is not um, a political film for the Igbos. I wanted to make a film about Ojuku, but I was born into the Nigerian Civil War, and I suffered the early years of my life in penury because of the war. And I'm really lucky to be alive. So I felt I was too close to that story to tell it. So I stayed away from it. But I had to include 
a Biafran element, which is also relevant to the story of IBB in the film, because we need to understand where we're coming from. All this saber rattling, all this incendiary talk that is going on, it leads to one thing, and that is war. And nobody ever wins a war. Everybody is a loser. So my brother, I, I feel you, but this is not that film. That film is coming, and when it comes, you would know. Thank you. Um, so so uh, the, the, the film is, we, we've been in very long conversations with um, Netflix, I'm allowed to say that. Um, and hopefully, the next few weeks or months, we will wrap up the deal and people can see this film in the comfort of their homes so that they can, they can pause and rewind and pause and rewind and understand every nuance in the story. Um, and I think that's going to happen. There's been a little bit of pushback and I expected that when I took on this project. But nothing can stop a project whose time has come. And I think the time for this film is here. All right, so Eina is a great actor who carries himself with class and panache. And casting him in the lead role was like heaven sent because he, he has the build, he has the, the slight physical attributes. Um, and he is big enough to carry the role without swallowing the character he's playing. And he's still flexible in his in his craft. So um, he hasn't even met the man that he played. Um, so he had to do his research based on watching videos, my feedback to him as a director and somebody that has observed the man in very close quarters for a very long time. So, you know, this filmmaking is a collaborative process and Enina is at the front, but there are lots of people including costumiers and makeup artists that helped him. But thank you for that question and uh, thank you very much. Tisha is making a nonsense of all our efforts. Excuse me. What must we do? It's Mr. Ndoka Irabo this afternoon. Release a press statement purporting to annul the June 12th presidential election. I have just done something that will haunt me for the rest of my life. You have messed up. I told you what to do, but you couldn't listen. The problem is not uh, with the system. The problem is with the people. The solution is structural adjustment program. Sir. Sir, only the University Senate can shut the university down. If I say the university is causing trouble, should be shut down, then they must be shut down with immediate effect. Whatever happens, the election remains cancelled.